Two states in Nigeria, Bauchi and Cross River, are trying to improve the health and well-being of their people by providing effective health services to those who need them the most. They are supported by the NACI project. NACI aims to make available, timely, accurate, and relevant information for health planning so that limited resources can be allocated where they are most needed and will make the most difference. CIED is a group of non-profit foundations, charities, non-governmental organizations and institutes dedicated to building the community voice into planning. Under the NACI project, CIED has been working closely with the state governments of Bauchi and Cross River since 2006 focusing on their priority areas of maternal and child health. Our social audit process collects information from people and communities and shares it with planners and policymakers to help plan improved health services. What is a social audit? Social audit methods have been developing over the last 25 years, beginning in the mid-1980s in an effort to provide evidence to support planning of better health and other services for people needing them. The CS Social Audit Method is a method of information gathering from the level of the community, level of the household, to the planning level, as against the regular method of government sitting down and deciding what goes to communities and what goes to households without a proper scientifically proven method of gathering this information and knowing exactly the needs of the people. The basic concept is simple. Focusing on the priority problem, collect information from people and communities supposed to benefit from services, share this information with the intended beneficiaries, service providers and planners, and design and implement evidence-based interventions to improve services and enhance people's health and well-being. What happens in the design of social audits? In Bauchi and Cross River, policymakers and other stakeholders were clear that maternal health and child health were priority topics for the social audit process. The ministry has been in the forefront uh, to decide the priority areas uh, in which the social audit cycles have been uh, used to gather evidence in our state. We have established a state uh, technical advisory committee with members drawn from the uh, line ministries, from the agencies in the health sector, as well as NGOs. Uh, the Department of Planning, Research and Statistics in the ministry leads uh, this committee. Uh, this is the committee that ensures that the contents and designs of each uh, audit cycle, including the instruments, have local relevance and uh, they fulfill the information needs of different users in the state. A review of existing data confirmed the need for more information to understand what increases the risks to maternal and child health, how services are working, and how the risks can be reduced. Next, we involve local planners and policymakers in a series of meetings and consultations to select an appropriate sample and design instruments for data gathering. This ensures the right information gets collected in a way that fits the local context, as well as building ownership of the process and increasing the chances of the findings being used in planning services. Right from the planning, the ministry had been carried along. The questionnaires were agreed on, the questions to be asked were agreed on collectively. They were part of the work in the field the feedback, and in every aspect of it, even when they, they, they had a feedback to the local government, the Ministry of Health was involved. We were informed of every stitch, not just being informed, we were part of all the processes of this project. Social audits are community-based rather than services-based. They collect information from members of the population, whether or not they use services. In Bauchi and Cross River, we selected a representative sample of census elimination areas in each state and drafted questionnaires to collect information about maternal and child health from women and men in households, as well as from health facilities. 
We translate questionnaires into local languages and pilot them in communities to check for overall flow and timing and to see if individual questions are understood as intended and produce the needed information. How do we collect information from communities? Potential field workers for social audit data gathering receive intensive training both in the classroom and in the field to ensure they understand and can use the data collection instruments correctly. We make sure that we select participants that are qualified, participants who are prudent, who are of good behavior, so that they will be able to give us quality and sincere data. Then we also give them a very rigorous training in order to ensure that they are able to understand the concept of what we are doing. The train field teams then visit the representative sample of communities to gather data. Inevitably, the representative sample of communities in Bauchi and Cross River include some that are difficult to reach. In some of the communities, we had to go three times before we were able to pass through those hard to reach areas. The social audit field teams have visited and collected information from some of the remotest communities in the states. In fact, in one community, we had to even hire a canoe and then climb the canoe ourselves and our motorcycles, and we were able to pass through to those communities. And in fact, it was a very difficult situation. Our field workers are trained to respect local norms and traditions. They dress and behave according to local norms and are familiar with community languages and conventions. Upon reaching a community, especially for the first time, the leader of the field team visits the community leader to explain the purpose of the work and to seek consent to approach households and individuals in the community. Within each community, we do not select certain households. The field workers find out and attempt to collect information from all households, excluding none until they reach an agreed number, usually around 100 to 120 households or individuals. First seeking consent from a senior member of the household, they proceed to interview relevant people living in the household. In Bauchi and Cross River social audits, the mainly interviewed women who have recently given birth are with young children up to three years old. Field workers only proceed with individual interviews when they can ensure the questions and responses cannot be overheard by other members of the household. In social audit, we use a variety of physical data collection instruments, including scannable formats and gadgets for electronic data capture. In many cases, we use a data collection register known as the Bhopal Book. The questionnaire is pasted inside the front back covers of the register and responses for each interview are recorded on a separate page. All responses are anonymous and we do not record names or other identifying information. Some social audits collect other information as well as interview responses. For example, in one of the social audits in Bauchi and Cross River, field workers measured mid-arm circumference of children aged 6 to 48 months as a measure of their nutritional status. As well as collecting information from households, in many social audits we also collect information from relevant services in the community. In Bauchi and Cross River, we collected information from health facilities serving the communities. Knowledgeable key informants within the community provide information about issues common to all community members, such as access to services. Supervisors of the field teams make sure the work progresses effectively and are responsible for the quality of data collection, solving any problems that arise, checking record responses and revisiting some of the interviewed households as necessary. Whenever we collect the data, right while we are still in the community, we check the data so that we ensure that nothing is missing. If there is any problem, we usually send 
the uh, we send them back to ensure that those things are corrected before leaving the community what is the role of focus groups in social audit focus group discussions play a part in most social audits sometimes focus groups help to clarify the best way to seek information about an issue in the local context this can be particularly important for sensitive issues in most social audits, we take back the initial findings of households to focus groups in the same communities. The participants discuss key findings, help give reasons behind the numbers, and suggest solutions to identified problems. They often advise about strategies to communicate the findings to precipitate actions. What would people need to hear? Who would they trust to hear it from? The focus groups are almost always separate for men and women. A facilitator leads the discussion and a reporter takes detailed notes. What happens to the collected information in a social audit? Trained data entry operators enter the information from the Bhopal books or other data collection instruments into an electronic database. In order to minimize keystroke errors, two separate operators enter the same data and the two resulting records are compared to identify discrepancies, a process called validation. We carefully review the electronic data set for logical inconsistencies and check back to the original records as necessary. We analyze the data at several levels. At the basic level, we summarize the information descriptively. What proportion of women had complications in their last delivery? What proportion of women did not reduce heavy work in pregnancy? What proportion of children suffered recent diarrhea? More importantly, in social audit, we go on to look at what factors are associated with an increased risk of certain problems. Changing these factors could help to reduce the problems. In Bauchi and Cross River, for example, we found that women who did not reduce heavy work in pregnancy were more likely to have complications in delivery. The next step is to make available the findings to all those who need to take action, from ordinary community members to local service providers to planners and policy makers. What is SEPA? All social audits include efforts to take back the findings to all those who need to take action from ordinary community members to local service providers to planners and policy makers. We share the findings in different ways with the different groups who need them. We call this process socializing the evidence for participatory action SEPA. At a minimum, we package findings in a way that makes them accessible to the different audiences instead of uh, spreading our limited resources across the board, we're able to focus on places uh, that the social audit revealed to us that we are not doing well. We got to understand our needs from the social audit uh, that was conducted. So it's quite helpful. In the NACI program, we use co-cards to share information with policymakers and planners at state level. These scorecards summarize key findings from the social audit and are helpful in discussing action pointers with state, local government authorities and world level stakeholders for policy advocacy and action. Certainly um, the information uh, collected from the exercise is an eye opener for cross state government. The result is captured in a scorecard and that scorecard uh, is reflecting the conditioned local government by local government. So apart from using the aggregate uh, summary uh, information for state development planning of the social services sector, specifically the health services, we also ensure that the uh, condition as expressed or as captured in the uh, exercise is uh, documented in the medium-term plans of the respective local governments. And it is the plan that will be used for budgeting. In the communities covered by NACI, 
we share findings in a way that is easy for people to relate to. In Bauchi and Cross River, we have produced documentary dramas around the evidence and screened them to groups of people in communities. We also show these docudramas to groups of influential people in communities to generate debate and discussion around the findings. The objective is to discuss ways and means of changing the situation at the household and the community level. For instance, if pregnant women experience difficulties in childbirth because of the hard work they continue to do in pregnancy, what can be done to support women and help them during pregnancy? We have also shared findings with individual households. Trained field workers visit households to identify and register pregnant women. Once these women are enrolled into the program, our field workers visit them every other month to monitor their health. A series of questions identify the risk or profile of each pregnant woman, including risk factors like being divorced or widowed, suffering intimate partner violence, continuing heavy work in pregnancy, lacking knowledge of danger signs, not having support networks or access to facilities, and not having partners with supportive attitudes about self-birth. Using cell phone handsets, field workers collect and relay geo-indexed data to a database in state headquarters, or, in the event of a signal failure, download the data at the end of the working day. Geo-indexing of all households assists in quality control and case-specific follow-up. A small team at state level, trained in processing of the data, key of relevant clinical action, and consolidate information for policy purposes. The technology is um, the mobile phone-based survey technology, which uh, has so many advantages. And besides the fact that it gives them the accurate data, what is imputed is what is in the database, because there is no other process of sitting down to do data um, entry. It gives them assurance that the interviewers are actually at the location where the interview is taking place because they have this um, uh, GPS-enabled functionality in that method. So the automated system of data gathering is just the best. And besides, I think it's even cheaper. It's secure. They don't go to the field with so much papers and come back to the office to sit down to input data from their questionnaires. Female field workers engage household members in discussion about the care of pregnant women. Male field workers discuss similar topics with the husbands of these women. Repeated visits to pregnant women and their family members are expected to have a positive impact at household level, increasing awareness of risk factors and danger signs among families, women and men. Visits after delivery should also increase the likelihood of appropriate postnatal care.